loyalty, arrogance, pride, the extreme drive to achieve a goal, and the ability to know what's coming. These are all features that make a great antagonist. Roswell A. Mathers is a descendant of the Mathers family, a very wealthy family who owns quite a big chunk of land in the Dragon Kingdom of Lagunica. He was born at a time where magic wasn't as well understood as it might be in the modern day, which led to him eventually suffering from the magic release period. When somebody possesses such potent magical power and doesn't let off some steam every once in a while, their body begins to overflow with mana. If not handled in time, the mana will eventually burst out, damaging their gate beyond repair. His body and state was rapidly deteriorating, and he had no idea why at his young age. Due to the low understanding of these kinds of subjects, Roswell wasn't necessarily liked by his family due to his random outbursts of pain. He was considered a burden, ignored, isolated, and abused. At some point, Roswell had become so adept at dealing with his body breaking down and the visceral pain of mana poisoning that he was able to function. Sometimes, however, he could tell the pain was on its way and would dip out of social situations to return to his room to deal with the pain. However, this time, things were different. This mysterious woman extracted some of the mana within Roswell's body, effectively ending his mana poisoning. She said that she had suffered similar things in the past. I'm certain that nobody has ever truly accepted you because of it. I completely understand your suffering as one who's experienced those feelings herself. He had always felt shame to be considered a part of the Mathers family. It hung over him as an extreme sense of guilt, but in this very moment, only at that very second, he felt as if he were not allowed to feel that guilt. For a young Roswell, this feeling was life-changing. Somebody who could finally understand him. Somebody he could finally vent his anguish to. Somebody he could confide in. Return by death! Return by death! Return hey, by death! Take it easy! <laughs> Echidna serves this purpose for both our antagonist and protagonist, being the one to free them from their respective burdens that nobody else could truly understand. However, they do diverge in the way they handle this sense of relief. Subaru is grateful to have this newfound freedom to discuss Return by Death with Echidna, however he's not too interested in her as a person, and tends to dip out. Roswell, however, stuck by Echidna's side as she helped him get back at his family, effectively usurping them, earning an apprenticeship with Echidna. He was no longer damaged, or powerless, or antisocial. He was granted his entire family's estate, power, and friends of his own. Roswell's admiration turned into love. His love turned into infatuation. His infatuation turned into unhealthy obsession. One could draw parallels to how Subaru saved Rem. Just like Echidna to Roswell, Subaru gave Rem a sense of purpose. Somebody who was stuck looking back, finally feeling like they're allowed to look forward. Being pulled out of unending darkness, and forming what one would call an obsession with Subaru. However, with Subaru, there was at least a chance of reciprocation. Roswell felt this unhealthy obsession for somebody who would never reciprocate. He would do anything for Echidna, his teacher, his love who made him feel like he could do anything, made him feel strong and loved, and then, that day came. Weakness, helplessness, and brokenness. Roswell's encounter with Hector is one that would change the very nature of his being. The strength he thought he had cultivated was gone in a brief second, and that strength was no laughing matter. He was taken under Echidna's wing and was an absolute magical powerhouse. The place he thought he could finally call home was eradicated, all in front of the teacher he was so deeply obsessed with. Maybe he was weak. And now your bones are crushed, your organs are splattered, and your heart is splintered. Without he felt despair. He failed to protect everything he cared about, but one thing still remained. His infatuation with Echidna. If he couldn't protect everything that made him happy, how could anyone else? Everyone is weak, including him. And nobody can hope to protect everything they love in life. How could they? All it took was one sole man to destroy everything that Roswell had come to know and love. He must fully dedicate himself to a single-minded goal. If he pours his entire life into a single thing, there's no way he can possibly fail to hold it all. This loss to Hector etched the very being of the Roswell we see today, as he picks up not only his style of dress, but also his speech patterns so that he can never forget the shame and defeat he felt that day. We see something similar with Amelia and how she sort of imitates her mother's speech patterns. After Echidna's sealing by the Divine Dragon to act as a deterrent towards Satella, Roswell tried to focus on that solitary goal he had in mind. However, it turns out not caring about people is quite the task. Even through his multiple hundred year lifespan, Roswell couldn't help but feel attached to Beatrice and feel the anguish of knowing that he could never be that person for her. Watching her sit in that library sad and alone, Roswell's philosophy should have dictated that he should have abandoned Beatrice and reusing Mayer long ago, but he just couldn't. He was imperfect. Over the years, he sank further and further into his own despair, being strung along by the Book of Wisdom, a book made by the witch Echidna that can read past, 
present, and even future, or at least the knockoff version created for Roswell. This book was his number one, as Echidna was no longer with him. It held the answers to his future. It held the answers for his ultimate goal. It was the only connection he had left to his beloved teacher. The very book that suggested he possessed the bodies of his descendants to keep his life going, all for his solitary goal. At this point, you might be wondering what that goal even is. Echidna is sealed. He's gone down multiple generations possessing his children. What could he be after? The coming day when... I kill the dragon. The Divine Dragon, the very dragon that sealed his eternal love and potentially releasing her from her seal. However, everything changed when he arrived. Roswell L. Mathers wound up backing a silver-haired half-elf who was qualified to run for the ruler of Lagunica. She was one half of the plan to be able to get closer to the Divine Dragon. The other half was perhaps even more crucial than the first, Subaru Natsuki. How overjoyed Roswell must have felt when he found somebody quite like himself. Somebody obsessed with a single person and deathly focused on a solitary goal. In Subaru's case, making Amelia the ruler, which happens to line up nicely with Roswell's goal. Roswell ends up acting as a foil for Subaru throughout their conflict. The two share quite a few similarities. Roswell sees Subaru as somebody just like him. He understands how many sacrifices must be made for the one they truly love, somebody who will not allow death to stop them from achieving their ultimate goals. With Subaru's looping and Roswell's constant possession of his descendants, alongside him embracing death knowing that in another loop, Roswell still marches forward. They are both loyal, prideful, and shrewd, which is exactly what set in motion the first season of ReZero. He wasn't entirely certain of Subaru's resolve despite these similarities, but saw the Book of Wisdom tell him to make Amelia entirely dependent on Subaru, so he set out to recreate for Subaru of what he felt against Hector that very day, to feel that he is too weak to save everyone, to mold him into a person who can only protect the one thing dearest to him, to let go of everything to get what Subaru truly desires by putting him in constant extraneous situations where he couldn't possibly save it all. But Subaru still managed. Cue the events of Season 2 or Arc 4, where events lined up so catastrophically that Subaru had to make the choice between Amelia or everyone else. Arc 4 shows us Subaru at his closest to being Roswell 2.0, pushing his self-sacrificial mindset to the extreme and going as far as to get comfortable with the idea of throwaway lives. Roswell's ideology stems from one aspect that these two characters share, self-hatred, weakness, helplessness, and brokenness. Three things that these two have come to know throughout their lives, and what pushes Subaru to this uncomfortable state we see him in during this arc. Roswell is Subaru with just one more bad day. Subaru without Rem there to pick up the pieces in Season 1 after all those terrible loops, and Subaru without the witches there to pick up the pieces again in Season 2 after even more terrible loops. So many times, Subaru's philosophy of people being strong almost came crashing down, but he had a strong support system to keep lifting him up. What Roswell could not have seen coming is Subaru's attempt at building his own self-worth, recognizing that the people around him do love and enjoy his company, but more importantly than that, counting himself among the people he wishes to save. Subaru finds strength through not only self-love, but through his rejection of return by death to carry him through this. He can't afford to be weak. He has to save it all. To beat Roswell, Subaru must become the opposite of him, trusting in his allies, relying on strong bonds, and rejecting death in a different way. It is the bet he forms with Subaru that is Roswell's undoing, his pride blowing up in his face. He feels he holds all the cards with arranging the mansion attack, bringing the Great Rabbit to the sanctuary, his outdated understanding of Subaru, and the Book of Wisdom. People seem to think that Roswell is evil for the sake of being evil, but what makes him so interesting is that it's quite the contrary. He was an abused and estranged boy who finally found peace in his life, only to have everything stripped away from him once again. Emotionally trapped into his single goal, no matter how much it hurt him or the people surrounding him to achieve that goal, so that he could have just another moment with the woman he loved. Roswell L. Mathers is quite a tragic tale. Everything that built Roswell up to what he is now is eventually what led to his downfall. Love, weakness, and pride. The love that gave him a sense of purpose was inevitably what drove him to the actions that led to his defeat. The weakness he felt everyone had due to his defeat led to him underestimating true strength, and the pride he felt in his goals led to his overconfidence. ReZero as a whole has a lot of different depictions of love, all to varying degrees of healthiness. Whether it be a lack of familial love through Rem, or the loss of love through Wilhelm, or the lack of romantic love from Subaru and Roswell, or through many characters without self-love. Self-love is something core to ReZero as a series, and is something that Subaru is trying to learn while Roswell outright denies it. How could he love himself after all he has done in effort of his goal? Hopefully one day, he'll find that faint twine that he can grasp onto and begin to love himself. The author of ReZero put it best at the end of Arc 3, This is just a story to reach quiet, peaceful times. This is just a story with long-lost winding roads where feelings intervened. A boy without self-confidence, letting his feelings known to a girl without self-confidence. This is just a story to try his best for a purpose like that.
Thank you for watching this video. This is one of my first attempts at character analysis. It's not something I'm very good at, but you know, practice makes perfect. If you like this video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to push the funny algorithm to recommend this video so I get thousands and thousands of viewers. Uh, also, you can follow me on Twitter for only good takes. I've never missed a single time. And you can also join my Discord, which is down in the description. We talk about My Hero Academia, ReZero, Jujutsu Kaisen, and stuff like that. And yeah, that's about it. See ya.